and we are live hello everybody how are you guys having a great thursday and today is the fourth thursday update of the year and what are we talking about today uh, who is there melanie sonia thank you so we're talking about numbers the number for january in the av until valley Pande lancaster uh, it's just kind of the same thing from the last kind of two years but i don't know why it gives me like worry where is this going um i'm gonna be talking about the deal of the week aldo thank you the deal of the week is a duplex in california city 10 percent return can you believe you can steal today buy an investment property with 10% return of investment? This is not crazy. Okay, there are deals out there. I'm gonna be giving my opinion, my personal opinion is not an investment advice. Remember, this is not to give you an investment advice and no a financial advisor. This is just to give you my personal opinion about Bitcoin. That is happening anyway. Either you like it or not, that's fine. And uh, by the way, Margarito, Corey, thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Today was awesome. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's roll, huh? Thursday's update. Fair week of February. I'm super happy to be here. I'm blessed. I'm happy. Yes, a lot of things, uh, incredible things are happening. I have a surprise for you. I've been telling you for the last two weeks, I'm doing something different, and I'm super happy because I'm growing personally, and I'm doing something that I wanted to do for a long time, and finally it's here. And I decided to challenge myself and get out of the comfort zone and do something extra. And, and it's happening. Okay? So let's go back to the numbers. AV numbers, Pandel Lancaster. Wow, check it out. In January, Pandel Lancaster inventory, new listings coming to the market, went down more than 15% from December. Right now, we only have 478 new listings in January. That is interesting and that is probably not that good for buyers. However, it's great for sellers and homeowners. And what I was trying to say is like the sales unit close during January, it wasn't that much. It went down 30% from December. So that means it can give you an idea. Maybe the market is shifting. However, it's kind of the same unit we close January last year, 2020. So it's the same from 2020 in January, went down 30% close unit from December, and the listings went down 15%. So there is a 15% gap. I want to do my personal numbers because I like numbers. Let's say you want to see when the market is going to stabilize, it's going to, it's going to get stable. Milagro, Milagrito, how are you doing? How are you doing? Great. Good to see you. Um, Assuming the market keeps going the way it is, maybe by December, we will be over a thousand new listings in the market in one month, which will be great to keep the market here stable. The way it is right now is only one month inventory available with the absorption rate, which is nothing, absolutely nothing. However, um, the new pendings, listings went to pending in January, went up 30% too. So didn't close that much in January compared to December, but we have more listing from December, pending, even though the inventory wasn't that much. Claudia, good to see you. Anyhow, so just to let you know, the market is still very tight. If you're a buyer, you're probably gonna be frustrated. Uh, we, we have a meeting with a buyer. He just pretty much fired me as a lender and, and the agent working with here at the office. The buyer was frustrated because they went to see probably five, seven times, over 25 properties in the last month or so. They put four properties and they didn't get the offer accepted. They get outbid and they didn't believe it. They thought the agent and, and even the lender, we were not doing the right job. And after a month, we were able to check the properties close to see how much was the price of the escrow's close and compare with the offers the buyer sent. Can you believe it? all of the offers were 8, 12% over the asking price. And the buyer was just offering around three, 4% more over the asking price. So he ended up 
like, you know, worry, like, how is it going to happen? So how somebody's going to pay a house if you have to be like an auction of bidding 10, 50% over the asking price? That is a great point. That is the reason why we're here where we are right now. And the reason why he's frustrated, like him, many of the buyers. Oh, how long is it going to be like that? At least for another 12 months. You just need to be patient, breathe, be more competitive, more aggressive. You're not, you're not listening because we explain him. You have to go five, 10% over the asking price. You want to get it. And without appraisal contingencies. You have money in the bank. You want to buy a house? Just do it. But he didn't do it fully. Committed the whole way, 100%. So, we love you anyway. We wish you, we wish you the best. Um, okay, so, deal of the month right now. The new listing. There is a duplex in Lancaster, in California City. This duplex is only $210,000. Can you believe it? You can buy a duplex. Almost new construction, built in 2006, 2016, something like that. It's, it's almost new construction. If you want to know more about the duplex, let me know. But it's tenant occupied, paying on time. The rate of, rate of return is a uh, return of investment is 10%. And it's California City right there, a city that is growing, it's busy. It's going to cost you more money to build that same duplex. I'm not, I don't have a license to do construction, I'm not an architect. But I bet you right now, if you want to build that same duplex, right now it's going to cost you over $300,000. Because I know who, somebody who wants to build, and that's how much it's going to cost kind of build that kind of building in that area. So what do you want to do? Buy a building already built with tenants on it, paying on time, giving you 10% return, or you want to build yourself, or you just want to wait three, five years to see what's going to happen with the market. I don't know. My opinion, if I had the money, I would buy that duplex. But I'm in a different path right now myself. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, ah, my opinion about Bitcoin. By the way, the listing agent on that property in duplex, that duplex in California City is Rocio, uh, Rocio Rubio. And uh, Benjamin. Benjamin, we love you. Rocio, we love you. We wish you the best too. I bet you, I bet you, you already have a couple of offers on it. If not, by Monday, you're going to be in escrow. Uh, okay, my opinion about Bitcoins. This is my personal opinion. It's not an investment advice. Remember, I'm a lender. I'm a broker, real estate broker. This is what I do. But I like to read and, and see the market and, and, and see how the people react and how the people behave with what's happening in the market. And regarding Bitcoin, my opinion is it's just another way to do investments like Roth IRA, investment uh, stocks or probably real estate it's not the same it's just another way why i'm saying this is right now i'm reading again listening to the book the intelligent investor by benjamin graham if you haven't read that book if you haven't listened to the book you have to do it that's like a bible for business it's recommended by warren buffett and all the people in business forever for a long time that business has been around for a long time Christy, good to see you. You're doing great, by the way. Keep it up. And what happened with this bill, this this book today? What a coincidence! Today was about you have to diversify, according to him, and you have to put the eggs in different baskets. You cannot put everything in the same basket. When he was saying that, was like, this is exactly what he says today on the book, and this book's been on for forty years. But check it out. Like for example, he was saying. Let's say you live in America. You're an American, living the American dream. You have an American job in an American company making dollars. And you are investing right here, your retirement account, 401k, Roth, IRA, IRA, in an American company with an American investment. So he pretty much was saying like, this is like having four or five layers of risk. If you don't have anything else, only that. Because whenever something happens, if ever it's going to happen here in America, United States, you're going to be fucked like most of the people in the United States because it's only about America and dollars and American business and the American way to do things. Pretty much he was saying, like, if you're going to be here doing everything you do in America, you should be thinking about investing in something else outside of America without dollars. And now that was just done on me like, what a coincidence. Like, for example, Bitcoin is not related to only America or American dollars. 
So it's another way to invest. Like, thanks God for myself. I've been blessed to own an apartment, a place in my home country that whenever I want, I can go there or I can enjoy it. I don't see it as an investment. I see it like a family thing, with being in the family. But the point is, you cannot be just attached to only one thing. And, and that's my opinion about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is growing. It's there. Like right now, today, you can buy Bitcoin with PayPal, Coinbase. It's like a lot of people with a lot of money, people that are influencers, people that I follow, like Robert Kiyosaki. And you know, thanks to Robert Kiyosaki, I'm here and I'm doing real estate. Uh, they, they are already in Bitcoin too. So I'm starting to put just one small percentage of my income into savings to Bitcoins. Kind of a Roth IRA or IRA. I've been doing it. And that's my opinion. If you can save some money on it, why not? It's in the long term. I'm not asking you to buy a lot of money or to invest all your money and sell it tomorrow. It's not about buying and selling. It's about keeping it in the long term. Because we never know what's going to happen in 5, 10, 20 years from now with Bitcoins, with dollars. And just going to give you an example. This weekend, I was blessed to take my kids. We, 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 we cash out the piggy bank. Well, I'm saying this because I, I was going to bring my coin, but I didn't bring it with me. We, pick, we cash out the piggy bank and we have $145 on the piggy bank. And we cash out that money to invest it on silver coins and Bitcoin. And why did I do that? I want to show them the value of the money in, in, in time. So silver coins in the United States stopped going out since 1971. Okay? 1971, that $1 silver coin was $1. Today, that one dollar silver coin is ten dollars. If you do the numbers, that how much is that? I know that was one dollar. No, it's a fifty cents, fifty cents dollar silver coin. Back in the nineteen seventy, was one dollar silver coin. So today, that one fifty cents silver coin is twenty five hundred, two thousand five hundred increase in value from nineteen seventy in thirty years. So Bitcoin. Eight years ago was four dollar one bitcoin. Today one bitcoin is thirty seven thousand dollars. That is over eighty two thousand percent increase in, in value. So what's gonna happen 10, 20 years from now to that silver coin or to that bitcoin? We will find out later. But we have it or we're working on it, and I want the kids to see it. We make a video and I'm gonna show the videos to the kids five, ten years from now, and they can they can understand what's happening right now. So that's my opinion about Bitcoin. Why not? Just a small percentage is kind of a retirement account, saving account in the long term. It's there. We cannot ignore the big white elephant in the room anymore. My opinion. Um, oh, that thing's for now. We already talked about the listings and the Bitcoin. and Ah, the surprise. This is the surprise and I'm super happy and excited. Starting yesterday, Wednesdays, every Wednesday, I finally will be in Santa Clarita, Yes, Santa Clarita, I'll be joining an office, a tax office in Santa Clarita, San Fernando, uh, Santa Clarita, Saugus, Valencia, New Hall, and I'll be the broker, the real estate broker and the lender in the house right there. And this is exciting for me. I always wanted to do there. I always want to be closer to down below. And now I can do that and I can help more people. So if you have any clients, anybody who wants to buy or refi or sell, whatever you want to do over there, we have a team over there. We can help you with the real estate part and I'm the lender to help you with any financing or financial needs. That's it, guys. I love you. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye. I think it took like a